Hi, my name is Stephen and I am representing Steadymaker. So we are looking at your SMG Extreme. Now that you have unboxed it and laid out your components, we're going to go through constructing your SMG Extreme 32-bit stabilizer. The main part you will need to be concerned about is the correct placement of your batteries in your battery case. Firstly, we want to check that your batteries have a full charge. You will find that there is a recharger for your lithium ion 1865 batteries. You will find there's a little silver spring mounted loading part. You want to place your batteries in there by pushing the bottom of the spring mounted part downwards. Uh, you want to use the flat part of your battery on the bottom of your charger. So place all three batteries in your charger. Remember the flat part at the bottom of your battery goes into the bottom of the silver spring mounted uh, section and that should hold it in there. So all three batteries in your charger and then you plug your charger into your outlet, into your power in your apartment. Now there are different ways you can use your charger. We provide you with a power cable but there is also a USB, a mini USB input so you could use it through uh, USB cable. We don't supply the USB cable, but it's easy to find that. Or you can find a 5 uh, to 24 volt power plug for your charger. So you can take it into different areas, but this should be sufficient. So just plug it in. You'll find LED lights on the top of your batteries. Uh, red means that it's charging and blue means that you have a full charge. I've already checked my battery, so I'm not going to plug it in now, but I have a full charge. You'll see blue lights light up here and you'll see a little red LED in the corner to tell you that you have power. Placing your batteries correctly is the most important part to make sure that your stabilizer will be fully charged. In order to do that, take your battery uh, case and you will see on your batteries there are two ends. There's a flat end and a, uh, an end with a slightly rounded uh, part. You want to put the flat end into the spring of your battery case, so flat end goes to the spring and the rounded end goes to the other flat side in your battery case. So I'm going to put those three in right now. Remember flat end to the spring, round end to the other side. So you should have mounted all of your batteries in your battery case. To put them in your stabilizer properly you will find there's a hole at the end of your battery case and a, uh, a part to put it into in the bottom of the main part of the stabilizer. Just slide it gently onto the hole. You'll find two screws here. Uh, you can use the notched part of your battery case and slide the end on and then make sure it lines up with the screw thread. Don't have to force it or push it in too hard. Just make sure that it's slid into the contact. So now you can see you have your stabilizer with your three batteries in. All you need to do is slide your handle over the battery case. So you put your handle over the top, find the end of the thread, and then just screw the handle on. So now your batteries are secure in the case and your case is secure in the handle of the stabilizer. If you wanna test that you have power before you put your camera in, just click the yellow button quickly and you'll hear a series of tones. If your stabilizer has power, you'll hear these tones and you'll see that the motors start to move. This means that your stabilizer is correctly charged. So, I'm just going to press the yellow button. You'll hear a series of tones and you can feel that the motors are moving. This means that, in fact, you can see the motors moving right now. This means that the motors have power. I'm going to click it off. So, your batteries are correctly in the case and in the stabilizer. Now we are going to pre-balance your camera in the stabilizer. This stage is important because an effectively pre-balanced camera will mean that your stabilizer gimbal motors will not have to work so hard and will give you a smoother ride when you're using your camera in the stabilizer. You are going to be adjusting three axes. You are going to be adjusting the pitch axis which is this motor at the side of your camera. This will control the up and down position of your camera, so points up or points down. You are also going to be controlling the roll. This is at the back. This gimbal will control how your camera tilts 
to the left or to the right. And your yaw axis, which is the motor underneath at the top of the handle, this is how it controls your cameras, turning to the left and turning to the right. So these three motors and these three axes in combination will balance your camera effectively. Now you want to balance your camera with the motors switched off. So before you power on your stabilizer, you will be balancing your camera. A better balanced camera without the motors will be a better balanced camera with the motors switched on. I'm using a Panasonic GH3 for this balancing. This is a good camera to use uh, for handheld or the Tank Plus as well. This is a good mid-range DSLR camera for the weight range of this stabilizer. So remember, you have a plastic bag in your unboxing with a small screw. This is for the tripod mount at the bottom of your camera. This will attach the camera to the cradle. In order to do this, just place your camera roughly in the cradle and then put the tripod mount screw into the bottom of the tripod mount and then just screw it onto your camera. Don't worry about the positioning right now, you're just looking to secure your camera in the cradle. Okay, so my camera is now secure in the cradle. In order to pre-balance, what we will do is isolate each one of the axes in turn and make sure that it's balanced in each axis. Then at the end, we will check all three axes together to make sure it is balanced. We're going to look at the pitch axis first. Remember, this is the one at the side of the camera to control the up and down. In order to balance the pitch axis, we will just hold the other two motors to make sure that they don't turn, that it's the only free floating axis right now is the pitch axis. You can see that at the moment your camera is back heavy. In other words, it's tilted upwards because the weight is to the back. So what we will do is loosen the screw a little and then slide it forward. Uh, we're just nudging it forward, small amounts. Loosen the screw, slide it forward. We're looking for a good balance in the pitch axis. So let's tighten it again and see how well it's balanced right now. Make sure it's straight and level in your cradle. So again, isolate the other axis. It's still slightly rear heavy. You can see it's tilting upwards, but not as much as before. So loosen it again and just nudge it a little forward. Smaller and smaller adjustments when you feel that you have achieved a balance. So checking it now, that looks pretty good. Now it's straight and level in the pitch axis. A good way to find out if it's straight and level, if you push the camera, it will return to straight and level once it uh, finishes oscillating in the pitch axis. Remember, there's no power in the motors right now. So we have isolated and balanced the pitch. Now we will balance the roll, which is at the back. Uh, in order to do that, same principle, loosen the screw at the top of the roll axis. Let's have a look. Now we go to the front and we can see it's tilting slightly in this direction. So we want to nudge it in the opposite direction. So you want to loosen the screw and then nudge the motors uh, backwards and forwards in the slider until you find it pretty much straight and level. Right now it's balanced in the other direction. So again, small adjustments backwards and forwards until you find it straight and level in this axis. Okay, once you've found a straight and level, tighten up the screw again. And now you can see again that it returns to straight and level, hopefully. Again, if it's not 100%, that's okay. So it's straight and level in the roll and it's also straight and level in the pitch. Now the last one is the yaw axis, which is the motor underneath. In order to do that, you would tilt the handle to the side, okay? So now you're holding the handle to the side. If the camera is still straight and level when you have the handle held out to the side, then you know that your camera is pretty much pre-balanced, okay, in the yaw axis. Uh, at the moment, that looks pretty good. If it is not, if it slides to the left or to the right or forward or backwards, again, you would unscrew this screw and then slide the slider backwards and forwards until you achieve a straight and level balance. Now there's one more screw that we haven't used, which is the screw on the pitch motor. You use the screw on the pitch motor when you have particularly heavy or particularly light setups. What you would do is unscrew it and then slide the slider up or down. Uh, it just gives you some more adjustments in the pitch 
axis. Remember, this is only for pitch adjustments. Remember also, when you complete the balance in one axis, you might lose the balance in the other two axes. So what you will usually do is you'll balance the pitch, the yaw and the roll, and then you'll find one of the axes needs a little more adjustment. Then you repeat the process using micro adjustments until you have a relatively straight and level setup. Once your camera is pre-balanced, it's very simple. There is a small yellow button at the back of the handle and you will see two buttons. There's a large silver one at the front. This is for your different stabilizer modes. And there's a small yellow one at the back. This is your on and off switch. Also, you'll find a thumb mounted joystick underneath the small yellow power button. In order to power on your stabilizer, you press the small yellow button just once quickly and you'll hear a series of tones. And you can feel the motors tighten up. There's power coming to the motors now. This means that your stabilizer is now powered up and ready to use. And in order to check that you have a nice level, stable uh, camera operation, you can find if you move the handle around, you see that your camera is maintaining a straight and level. Now, there are different modes on your stabilizer in order to adjust the camera operation. If you press your button once, now this means that the camera is now locked in the pitch, which means it will maintain a straight and level pitch axis while still following in the yaw. So you can see if I turn left and right with the handle, it is still attempting to follow where I'm turning the handle. However, if I pitch the camera forward or backwards, you can see that the camera is now locked straight and level in the pitch axis. This is very good for uh, particularly low angles in inverted mode when you put the handle at the top of your stabilizer and you want to do tracking shots close to the ground or when you're holding your stabilizer up high, it will still maintain a straight and level look from your camera. If you press the large silver button twice, you'll find that this is a default mode. This means that the camera will attempt to follow where you point your stabilizer. If I tilt my stabilizer down, you'll see that the motors attempt to pitch my camera down to follow where I'm pointing with the camera. Same if I turn it up, then you'll see that the camera pitches upwards to match where I am pointing my stabilizer. And the same if I pan left and pan right, the yaw motor underneath the handle will also attempt to match. So this is the default mode. This is a follow mode. It means that it follows where you point your stabilizer. If I press it three times, again, you'll hear a series of tones. And now my camera is locked in the pitch and the yaw. This means that if I move the handle to the left and right, it will still keep the stabilizer straight and level wherever I point it. So if you want to lock your stabilizer in a straight and level perspective, that's three short presses of the silver button. And also, if you press a silver button five times very quickly, you hear a series of short tones. This is a quick calibration mode. This attempts to readjust and rebalance your motors in all three axes until it has found a straight and level. It's a good idea to keep this down when you do this so that it can find a balance. When it has found a balance, it will stop beeping and return to your control. Now it has rebalanced all three motors. Now in all of the modes, you can also use your thumb mounted joystick, which you will find at the back of your camera. This controls the pitch and the yaw of your stabilizer. So I can pitch down and pitch up the direction of the camera. You can use this for some extra control when you want to pitch left or uh, when you want to turn left or turn right or pitch down or pitch up. You can see that the thumb mounted joystick adds a little extra control. So now you have effectively pre-balanced your stabilizer you can go and use it on your shoot. Uh, happy shooting with your SNG Extreme, and I look forward to hearing uh, and seeing your footage that you use with this stabilizer. Thanks a lot.